Welcome to the talk, Merging Maple and GeoGebra Automated Reasoning Tools. We will talk about uh, automated deduction in geometry. Also, the dynamic mathematics program, GeoGebra, will be introduced. And also, we'll use Maple to make a fruitful collaboration of uh, obtaining nice uh, geometric uh, properties of a figure and uh, some mathematical background will be explained. One example as uh, introduction, we have a triangle and we uh, construct the circumcenter of this uh, triangle, the orthocenter, that is an intersection of heights, then uh, the symmetric uh, of the orthocenter with respect to the vertex A, so this is that point, and also we uh, create a symmetric of vertex A with respect to the middle of the opposite side, so this is symmetric of A. Then we conjecture that the symmetric A, so this point lines on the line defined by the circumcenter, and the symmetric of the orthocenter. So this is a kind of a geometric uh, statement, and this can be obtained in GeoGebra by using the relation tool. We obtain the whole statement under a kind of specific condition. The second way to obtain some interesting uh, information about the picture uh, to directly prove uh, a statement and to issue this comment prove or prove details by typing uh, the command in GeoGebra on the command line or input line. There's a third tool, uh, namely the locus equation, uh, but it's a ki kind of different, even if the mathematical background is a bit of similar. So we make a construction, but we do not consider the symmetry of A with respect to the midpoint of the opposite side. Rather, we build a free point D, so this is the free point here, and we consider the symmetry of A with respect to D. So this point is here. Obviously, this symmetric point doesn't lie in general in the line defined by the circumcenter and the symmetry of the orthocenter with respect to A. So we would like to discover new theorem where to place D so that this alignment takes place. And the answer is place D on the red line. This is a necessary condition, maybe not uh, sufficient. A fourth uh, approach, we make a new construction, this time placing D on the red line. Yeah. So let symmetric A, this point, be the symmetric of A respect to D, but D is any point on this red line. In this case, the symmetric A is aligned with the circumcenter and the symmetric of the orthocenter with respect to A. So the answer is yes, uh, GeoGebra can uh, prove this, but uh, we need to notice that humans uh, have got to find the geometric properties on our own. So namely that the line parallel to the one described by symmetric O and the circumcenter that goes through the midpoint M of BC. So this is kind of human Task. At the moment, uh, GeoGebra cannot provide such exact information, only visual hints in this manner. So uh, this is a slide how GeoGebra reports uh, the truth of the proven statement, of the, of the conjectured uh, statement. Another example is uh, something more visual, and this works on a smartphone, not just uh, one conjecture, but uh, all theorems related to one point can be obtained by uh, using this tool. So we make a square in the first step and then a point uh, on the point B and uh, by using this icon here, I think I can show this one, this discover icon, uh, we can obtain the discover theorems on point B, but we can also see some visualization of it. And even more, automatic version of our automated geometry is the following one, in which we just draw a figure and ask the machine to prove 
all statements of a certain kind involving all the elements of the figure. So here we take a famous proposal in the ICMI study school of mathematics in the 90s, the so-called uh, Kuwait study, and ask the machine to solve this task. So what happens in this case? Uh, we used the, the automated geometer. The automated geometer will be asked after having a square to, to learn uh, about the whole figure. So, of course, we created uh, two lines uh, through D and the midpoints of the opposite sides and created also the diagonal AC and created the intersection points. And then we started the discovery. And in two seconds on the Mac Power Book 2015, 31 statements will be obtained. Of some are not very interesting, but even though searched equations AG equals CH and uh, AG equals GH, they are there. So these are obtained automatically by uh, the automated geometer that is based on GeoGebra. Well, just one more uh, comment uh, from the Kuwait study. So we can find the words mechanical procedure here. And in those days, they referred to using algebra and algorithmic manipulation by hand, as opposed to geometric logic and thinking. But uh, let's consider the same sentence now with the GeoGebra art, automated reasoning tools. So this is the present. This is now. In the next slide, or two slides, uh, we would like to introduce uh, some more detail on the theoretical background. Generally true, generally false, they are quite well known uh, definitions and notions in algebraic geometry, but basically we will introduce a different uh, notion which is quite new and extends the, the well known notions in a natural way. Uh, we will uh, consider the set H of the hypothesis, so they are the, the properties of the figure, and the thesis T, which is uh, just one uh, polynomial and the polynomial uh, that is generated by it. So we have a lot of variables in X and Y, and uh, we uh, assume that uh, there is a maximum size set of independent variables for the hypothesis. Uh, ideal and we denote it by d. So these are those variables that are uh, in the maximum size set. We will use uh, the notion of the k components. Uh, this is very important to be able to separate components uh, that are related to the true parts and the other components that are related to the false parts of a state. Uh, this play a very important role in the theory uh, to use components uh, similarly like uh, factors of integers in number theory, in, in uh, basic number theory. So we have generally true and generally false uh, statements. And uh, the third one, true on parts and false on parts, if the thesis uh, vanishes on some, but not all non-degenerate uh, K components of the hypothesis variety. Maybe a figure can uh, illustrate, uh, enlighten a bit how these notions uh, are combined, uh, generally true uh, and always true, generally false and always false. So in, in these two cases, the elimination ideal is not equal to zero. In the always case, uh, it's, it equals to one, the, the ideal generated by one. And uh, we we found a very interesting uh, theorem that uh, can identify if a theorem, a statement is uh, true on parts, false on parts, instead of computing uh, the components. Maple has a very uh, effective and useful comment uh, to compute the primary decomposition, and uh, sometimes it's just too heavy, and we cannot afford to compute several minutes or hours or even days uh, to have the primary decomposition. So that's why we use uh, this test, which is, uh, in many cases, it can deliver uh, the answer if a statement is true on parts 
uh, for some parts. One simple e example to see how these algebraic criteria are used in practical context and how maple computations help understanding what is going on. So let's consider for the sake of clarity a very trivial uh, example, circle by center A at zero, zero, point B in one zero, and uh, an arbitrary point C with coordinates U, V in the circle, and the intersection of the circle with the diameter. And uh, we have two intersection points, uh, X, Y, and R, S. Um, we don't uh, assume that X, Y is uh, here and R, S is, is here, so they can be swapped. The equations uh, look like these four ones. So one, two, three, sorry, five uh, equations. And uh, of course we ignore equals to zero. So in the theory usually equals to zero is uh, skipped. So the thesis is uh, if these two uh, vectors are perpendicular by using the scalar product. If you use uh, maple to check our ideas, then uh, double I is the ideal of the hypothesis. It is of one dimension because the only free point is UV, so the coordinates of the C, and it is constrained to the B on the circle. So now we try to see the perpendicularity of the segments uh, UV and RS, uh, so UV, RS, and UV, XY is a true result or not. First uh, result shows that uh, U is actually free, so there is no polynomial in uh, U in uh, double I. This uh, result shows that the statement is not generally true because it's uh, zero generated idea, zero. Uh, this shows that it's not generally false. And uh, after creating the primary decomposition in Maple, we learned that the number of uh, components is four. And finally, we can learn that uh, each uh, component has a uh, dimension one and uh, not all of them are interesting uh, because only the second and the third one gives a true uh, statement and the first and the fourth one gives a false statement. So the generally true parts are only on the second and the third component and otherwise uh, the parts are generally false. So this is partly true and partly false. We found an example of true on parts, false on parts. The same result can be obtained in uh, GeoGebra. So this is how GeoGebra handles the situation, but not with primary decomposition because it's not uh, programmed. It's only in Maple at the moment. Uh, GeoGebra does the simple check uh, shown in a, a previous figure by using elimination in the background. Uh, and actually, uh, the Herbert dimension is also computed to double check if this uh, elimination is uh, possible or not. Another example is uh, from a paper by Zhou, Wang, and uh, Sun. So we have a triangle here, an arbitrary triangle, and we build uh, regular triangles on the top of them. And we want to see if uh, the length of AD and BF are, so these lengths are equal to each other. And we can obtain this information here in the automated geometer, the web version, by using uh, red colors, we can obtain that these statements are true only on parts. Maple can uh, do the same. And it's very interesting that uh, here the primary decomposition is not possible because it's too complicated. But we don't need it actually because we can learn that the uh, statement is true on parts by obtaining uh, these two results here. Another example of true on parts, uh, we build a triangle ABC and put the midpoint of AC and F will be chosen from this side, from the side BC. And we think that we assume that DF is the half of AB, then uh, this point uh, F should be uh, at a position that DF uh, is parallel to AB. So this is the question if this uh, statement is true or not, but it's not 
a generally true statement, it's just a statement that is true on parts because uh, we can see that the point F can be here and GeoGebra can use here a kind of elimination in the Lox equation command to find not just this point, but the, this other point. So you can see that the F here has the same length as uh, the F, but it's not, uh, it doesn't deliver a parallel situation. Uh, we can uh, compute this uh, with Maple as well. Again, we obtain that uh, this is a true on parts statement, but the primary decomposition is unfortunately too heavy. Maple can, of course, uh, use the simpler strategy to obtain the quartic polynomial that is a uh, product of two quadratic polynomials, so two points actually that give the result. The final uh, issue, this is quite new, uh, that is related to minimal extended polynomials. We will call them MEP to solve some of the unexpected true on parts problem. Uh, one problem when distances are involved. So here we consider three points, A, uh, C, and B, and we wonder if, as obviously expected, AC plus CB length equal to AB. So the answer is true on parts, but why? We consider the same thesis, but here multiplying the thesis in all possible formulations with plus and minus G, I, H, yielding a fourth degree polynomial with an alternative way of constructing two possible approaches. So here we have the product of all uh, combinations and here we have uh, this polynomial by using an elimination uh, idea. So there is a nice uh, theorem in the background that these two are always the same. In this example, uh, Maple can uh, compute uh, the same result and uh, we learned that uh, here we have kind of true and parts problem in the background, unless we use the MEP, because in that case, we can uh, obtain a generally true answer. So the MEP can be very helpful in, in some cases, but unfortunately not always. In a case when uh, we have a zero dimension, uh, zero dimensional problem, then uh, the MEP alone is not a solution. So all the previous uh, notions refer to elimination with respect to a maximal set of free variables, the ones that control the figure, uh, the ones uh, that can be dragged independently, but sometimes the construction doesn't have any free variables, so the dimension is zero. Then there are some specific criteria easier to apply for this case, considering any variable u, even it is not free. So these uh, simple uh, conditions are useful in this case. But uh, even though uh, we can see that uh, the MEP uh, not, uh, is not really helpful because we still have uh, six uh, components and only one is true and the, the, the other five uh, are false. And even if we change this G minus one to uh, the MEP, namely G, uh, J square minus one, uh, the components are still different. So they, we have differently twice true and four times false. So yeah, uh, the MEP only uh, is not helpful. We need the true on parts check. Conclusions. Through some examples, we introduced automated reasoning tools in GeoGebra and uh, in automated GeoMeter that is also based in GeoGebra. We showed some issues appearing in algebraic geometry and Maple was very useful to detect and fit uh, some of them, but some further research is needed and we expect that Maple will be very helpful in this and we think that uh, in the future GeoGebra and Maple can collaborate even more together to deliver nice examples on uh, algebraic geometry and planar geometry. Some final references uh, in this slide you can uh, find quite specific uh, references on the topic and the very last slide shows some applications. Thank you very much for your kind attention.